Yay. Hello, hello to you, Andrew, and hello to who is listening and watching, because here is Heidi from the Wisdom Factory, and once, six years and longer ago, we did an interview in English almost every week. And now I just mentioned the last one in English I did a year and a half ago, so times have changed, things have changed, but I wanted to reconnect with Andrew McDonald and to know what he is up to. We had talked before and we met in several other groups in the meantime, and I think it's interesting because at the moment it's all about women and feminist uh, foreign policy, as we have in Germany, a very strange thing. It's all about at least as much women have to be somewhere and as much as right. they but <clears throat> yes. not really everywhere. I mean, women wouldn't like to to put down the tiles on the floor or go on the roof and, and do this work, but they want to do the nice and good work. So then, <laughs> <laughs> and I have a women's groups and I find it nice where we discuss uh, um, topics which are near to us. And so yeah. I know from you that you are doing men's groups. Men, yeah. Men's groups. Men's, yeah. Groups, men's yeah. groups. Yeah. As I said, I'm losing uh, English. So sometimes it might sound a bit strange. And so I'm curious in what uh, you are doing. But first, not everybody will have heard the first interview I had with you. So maybe you'll tell me a little bit, me and the audience, who you are, what you're doing, what you're up to, and so on. Yeah. OK. Thanks, Heidi. It's great to be here. And I, I'm, I love the look. I haven't seen your property before. Um, and to see, it looks, yeah. it looks more, more majestic than I'd imagined it. Um, <laughs> yeah, good. it is. Uh, it is not as you know the the camera. I think is going like this, but it's quite quite big. From here to the to over there, it will be twenty meters, twenty five meters more or less. It's it's, it's not small. That's for sure. <laughs> right. Yeah. If yeah. you want to see uh, to to, I'm preparing a new website, and it's called Paradiso Pro Project, not Project with C, but Project with K. Dot com and then you can see more of these things okay, and okay paradiso what parade. i'm up to <laughs> right great <clears throat> reminds me of over to Cin you cinema paradiso <laughs> the movie cinema paradiso i just love that and i was yeah i heard uh, when you google paradiso you find this yeah but sometimes yes. you find it also me <laughs> okay so um well heidi we remember that we met because I was looking for somebody who was interested in integral philosophy and the shadow of integral. And that was a few years ago. And yeah. I don't exactly remember all of the context now, but but you came up. I think I saw you want to comment on a integral forum. And then we met and we Maybe. talked mm -hmm. yeah. about where was that what, what's happening with integral and why with all of the the challenging things going on in the world of consciousness and politics that we didn't see more talk within integral about the challenges the global challenges that we were facing it was as if they weren't there and that was like huge for me and I remember it was big yeah. for you and it was really yeah, exciting yeah. Weird, to meet weird. you. We had yeah, some conversations thought, about that. Exactly yeah. because I thought if not the integral people uh, addressing this topic who then you know but yeah. everybody was sort of eh, good not saying anything taboo oops what happened to you? I, uh, I was you trying are. to clear my screen because I can see it's not very clear. <laughs> it was uh, funny. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I now I remember. Yeah, yeah, it was this. And I was quite upset then because I ha would have expected the integral community to be yes. more yes. critical, more yes. you know. m m more attuned to that. Yeah. And, there and were that, goes, single, that, that goes single. along with something that is really striking to me, how we get caught in our silos, you know, our 
our local areas of what we know or what we think is true. And then it's hard for us to see outside of that. Yeah. And, and, you know, coming to gender for a moment, that's, that's true of the sexes as well, but it's true of everything. We're all in my, in my view, we're always caught. I'm always caught with my particular story, my particular drama, my particular trauma, because I've come from a back, I've come from an experience of of trauma, um, along with many other experiences, but that's been a very shaping experience in my life of trauma. And uh, it and releasing from that is like disentangling from our particular stories and this and maybe the stories that have got a hold of us that are grabbing on to us with their their tight fingers grabbing us so disentangling from that has been um is it is, is part of our challenge for all of us today to awaken into a larger world yeah so um um about men and women so i i i'm old i'm an old guy but um 30 years or so i got into men's work and i was already you know uh 40 a little over 40 then 40 something and um i was amazed because well a couple of things <clears throat> one is that Part of my difficulty as a child um, uh, was um, uh, difficulty with mom and dad, you know, with both yes, of them. I, almost I, I, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave. I'll just leave that whole area. But uh, yeah. probably especially. No, it's, it's, there's no especially. There's no especially. But um, it was confusing to me. So my relationships with men and women were not very clear i was not i was for one thing i was afraid of women i grew up afraid of women and of men actually but um intimate relationships were were hard were, were not successful i was frightened to be too close and in too much intimacy so with men it was okay but when I got into a men's group at 40 something was the first time in my life after all those years that I'd ever talked honestly, told people what I was experiencing, how I was, what was going on with me. And I also having for a variety of reasons, I had been a very, very low achieving male. I'll say that up into my 40s. So I didn't feel that I measured up well. I didn't feel successful. I didn't feel confident. I didn't feel proud of myself. And um, I was in a group with, in Ottawa, Canada, with a group of men who whose wives were, at least for some of them, their wives were in the local Jung society and the women were meeting. But the men were thinking, what, what, what about us? What, we're not, why are we not doing anything? And, and most of them were middle-aged and had achieved some success in their lives. Like they, they had the kid, they'd had the marriage, had the kids. They were successful in their careers. They had, enough, they had enough money. And there was a question of what now is my, this, a general perception. It was a question of what's next for us. And for me, it was the first time that I had an, that I had found myself able to talk about my actual life, you know, what was actually going on with me better uh, than I had. And that was really, really important. And I've been in, involved, that group went on for about 18 years with a crack in the middle for a bit. And, I, and then years later, in recent years, we've actually got back together again. Um, although I have to say that from my experience, COVID and all of that has 
driven a, um, uh, a, a has divided us or we're not it doesn't feel speaking for myself we don't have the same uh clarity and unity that we had before so i am a conspiracy theorist i say that was the reason why covid came up <laughs> a conspiracy realist i call yeah. it conspiracy right. realist because they want us not to come together they whoever right. they is you know but uh, the tendency is to keep us separate and because separate you alone can't do anything but together aha that's the power and that's one of your topics too no the v space and everything yes. <laughs> yes so it's an open question and i i don't have the answer for it but so much has gone into the so much um energy has 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 gone into the separation of women and men the split between their natural respect and love and appreciation and recognition of commonality between women and men it's been such it's such a striking feature of our lives that you know, I have to wonder whether it was very deliberate or how deliberate it was, because it's been incredibly successful at splitting the foundation of the society, the unity of men and women, and the ability to raise children who who feel they have equal and equally respected parents who both have a good place, so that children can feel that they both have a good that they have a good place so so i i do wonder wonder about that and i'm very very interested in how women and men can come together and find ourselves in respect um and safety and having a language for being together in which we feel we feel um as allies together in facing what i think our common challenge or or our I hate to say enemy but our common uh the problem is that i think that we have globalist forces that are holding us that that are um disunifying us and making it hard for us so men and women are not each other's enemies and actually unconsciousness is our enemy the only enemy i i see think that the globalist forces including the world economic forum and the who the world health organization and the united nations and and uh in the entire governing structure of the world is um is compromised by a by a um a deep unconsciousness of what's of what we're here for it's not that they're enemies or evil so much as that they're deeply unconscious and it shows up as you know uh powerful negative forces in our world so it's a it's a it's a consciousness challenge it's, yeah. it's a consciousness challenge as i see it so i'm but let I'm, me ask you something you you said the separation between men and women that has is a long time that it is going on and we try to somehow overcome it you see other countries are still heavily that the women are under subdued let's say but what you are talking about now in the last years, that is a separation, not only between men and women, but between more or less everybody in all groups, yeah. separation. Yeah. That's the, yeah. you, up, you belong to, to different groups, so the separation goes everywhere. So at the end, you are alone, you know, that, um, yeah, it's not specific men and women, I wanted to say. Yes, you're right. It's certainly not, it's not, it's certainly not only men and women. 
No. But that split is so foundational mm -hmm. because it's it exists in the heart of the family and in the heart of our individual psyches. So mm -hmm. almost so fr from a developmental point of view, our development with the conditioning of and, and the physiological experience of being a man or of being a woman is so foundational to us. The you know the the political separations between you know the left and the right um and it comes after that but a, but the man woman split is so foundational when you said it's been going on for a long time <clears throat> i guess you mean are meaning to ancient times is that correct yeah, like, yeah. You, don't, um, you don't just mean the last 60 or 70 years no no i mean at least uh, since enlightenment, uh, mm -hmm. when then uh, the the this um, bourgeoisie bourgeois uh, family started to be the women, you know, not even nurturing their children anymore, but only you know being in the, the lady in the house and the men do the politics and the uh, everything outside the house. While before, I know, I think I have heard and I think to know that in medieval times, the, the women had quite an important role in maintaining the family. Also, they did, uh, they worked together, men and women, to, women to, 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 to bring up the family. They were handicraft yeah. people and so on, you know. And then yeah. when the, the, the work diversified and was more, you know. Uh, With the Industrial Revolution, the men exactly. were at the house. Exactly. <laughs> Mm -hmm. There's many factors, um, many, many factors over the long history. I mean, the history of men and women is almost the history of culture. So it's very, very hard, hard to, to, for me to do um, statements that can summarize it well. I don't have that. I don't have it in my mind. But I've done a lot of, um, so... I'll put it this way, that if you study the sexes today, you look on Twitter or you look you look at the literature, you look at popular culture about how we're understanding women and men. And I'm talking about the West here. The 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 atmosphere of the conversation, the vibration, the vibe of the conversation is very, very negative. It's very uh, antagonistic, you know. <clears throat> it's pointing to um, the problems, the injustices that are being perpetrated by the other sex. And I, I spent a lot of time examining parts of that, but I don't think it's a useful conversation. I don't really want to go in. I don't. I don't want to go into it because because we're so triggered by perceived injustices <clears throat> or real things because there's examples of all kinds of horrors on, on every side <clears throat> so i don't find it it's not a conversation i'm, I'm really interested in right now because i do think yeah that... not... go ahead it's not healthy because it goes into victimism and when you are a victim yes. You cannot Absolutely. grow up. You you get, get infantilized, you know. And totally. we want to grow up, and the, you need to take over responsibility for things. And uh, when things have gone this way, they have gone this way. You need maybe maybe surely recognize that it was like this, but not spend your time in accusing uh, men who, in in my case, no, as a woman uh, accusing men uh, because who have never done it in this they are not the reason for it i think there is a period and i leave it for my life where i had this you know bashing of men but then you need to overcome that <laughs> you right. cannot say yeah. on that you are yeah. not a victim if you are a victim i mean <laughs> yeah and yeah yeah and and i have felt um i have i've been sort of a a, a guilty part of the uh, almost like a guilty pleasure. I understand better 
but I still have participated in seeing the, the other side, seeing men's point of view and where men are seemingly victimized. In I, I spent a lot of time there, but it's, although with some intellectual consciousness of that, uh, of, of um, that that wasn't the whole story. On, on what I'm saying is that Intellectually, I see the balance. Emotionally, I didn't see it. Emotionally, I felt the pain of the separation in a particularly man way. I feel that I'm mostly over that now, or or who knows? But I feel I feel much. I feel I feel not held by that story mm -hmm. physically or emotionally anymore. Good, good. And because I wanted to to add. We, women are surely being mistreated by men, but also by women. And the other way around, men have been mistreated by other men and victimized by other men and also by women. Only women have a different way of doing it. They don't use physical sure. power. That's they right. use <laughs> psychological that's right. power. That's right. And I'll give you, that's right. I'll give you an example, too, of how the distortion happens and, and and this whole area is not well known because we have a social story that only women only men can be perpetrators and and men can only be perpetrators and women can be only be victims that's the social story we have and it's just not true yeah. or one person characterized it as uh, is a, a, a really wonderful uh, male writer who see who saw and spoke to the the um, the mutuality of our story is Warren Farrell back about thirty years ago. He wrote a book called The Myth of Male Power. It's a truly yeah. wonderful book. Yeah. But he pointed out in, the, in early on in the book that we have we have we're very familiar with women's light side and men's dark side. And what, and we don't have a corresponding understanding of men's light side and or women's dark side. They're socially not allowable in the cultural narrative. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, coming back to the way forward from here, I think it's incredibly powerful place in terms of what's happening in the world to think of unifying or being part of the unification of men's love and women's love. I'm not talking about the individual couple only, but about the archetypal nature of our intimate love and respect for each other. We are, we are, um, you know, we're so connected that we're one, right? And yet want, we have... I want to hijack you. Uh -oh. <laughs> you <laughs> because you are not up to date. Today, men and women are the same and you can even change what you are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I'll just, I'll say about that. that Don't I, take I, it seriously. I, I, know, I, I hear what you're saying, Heidi, and it's it's true. Um, I'm laughing. I'm laughing. For me, it's ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. It is for me also. It is for me also. And, and it's, yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's not easy, or, or it's a challenge to have this conversation with younger people today, because it seems to them politically incorrect, or or bad, to claim the to claim uh pride in masculinity yeah. and to claim pride in a traditional femininity yeah. in the in what we used to see as the virtues of women and the virtues of men now they're the indoctrination has worked What's the indoctrination that? has worked you know has worked beautifully yes it has it has it, it, it's a symptom of a wider as you were saying it's a symptom of a wider lack of clarity between the sex uh, wider split between the 
parts of our culture, right? But it's, I think it's a critic, critical one because it is the family and it is the, you know, the the heart of our in, inner psychology. The foundation is based on being a man or a woman. I believe that we're evolving to see ourselves as being, as being consciousness or being um, uh, a higher in a higher unity, but we need that foundation of being a woman or a man. A child or a young man who doesn't have that is dissociated from his psychic past of how men were and the qualities of men. So he, uh, speaking of men, he can't embody that well. He can't, he doesn't know how to take it on because it's shameful for him to feel pride in the the strength, the agency, and the, you know, the worldly um, power with which men moved into the world. And I'll say too, in the connection to God, because men have, men men's action in has been deeply connected to service that men's honor which is a primary sense of masculine um value is has always been in the context of service to to god and country you andrew if somebody hears it you are completely incorrect. You are in the far right corner now. I if am. Somebody is pushed there who has. <laughs> I'm, I'm a conspiracy realist, but at least yeah, you, it's, 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 uh, you are least, everything which shouldn't be in the. At least you. I've got you for. I've got you for company as a conspiracy realist, Heidi. So <laughs> I feel much safer. Yeah, no. Just to say, I, I, I start to laugh on all these things because they are so weird and so un. <sighs> I don't know, like so distant from from themselves, from from humanity, from its from human itself, from from yeah. creation yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, when then there's only thought, thoughts, 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 and theories, and and then I have the best idea, and now I force you to do as as I want you to be, and you know. That was has unfortunately been also with feminism, no? So it's, uh, yeah. but you know now the the women who go into politics they are worse than men, by the way. <laughs> In their, <clears throat> they don't express feminine qualities. Let's say in this way, they might have nail, have nail polish or high heels, but that's not feminine quality. That's just a. How do you say the the scene a theater the costume of the theater play you know yeah yeah <laughs> okay yeah. I'm interrupting you go ahead no 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 Not absolutely no uh, it's more uh, it's a conversation is better than is always better than a monologue yeah 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 go ahead and and tell tell me a little bit about your work of the last few years. What you so, would well, um, I've been doing a blog for a few years, and Heidi, it was so confusing for me because you know I'm interested in consciousness, right? I'm a meditator and all of that. So I have changed the name of my blog back and forth. Um, I don't know what to compare it to. Every just keep on changing it back and forth. So, something to do with consciousness, something to do with men and women, something to do with men alone. So I, so these subjects are really intertwined for me and I find it hard to separate them out. So now I call my blog Waking Up Today. I'm sort of, that's my latest thing. And I think I'm probably going to stay with that because it allows me to have the, to, to, have the consciousness centered and I have a little subset around men and women. So I have been doing, um, and this is really exciting for me. And I'm happy that to tell you and maybe others will have some related experience, but I've been doing a lot of dyad meditation means dyad means pair, right? It's uh, it's a two. So are you familiar with with that? Yeah. So so there's many different um, 
communities online and in person, like at least somewhat, somewhat not geographically in one place in person, but there's European groups that come together, for example, that um, practice di dyads. So it is, it, it comes from the world of enlightenment. So two people, um, such as yourself and myself, would take timed periods of usually five minutes each, where, where one would give the other a prompt uh, with an enlightenment theme, such as tell me who you are, for example, or, or um, uh, tell me what another is, is another one. And the listener, a prompt is given, the person looks for something true about that and just gives it to the, the listener, just gives it to them, just tells them. At the end of five minutes, they switch mm. roles, and this goes on for 40 minutes. So I've been doing that for, and, and variants of that for, I don't know, 10 years or something. But that particular form is more more recent. Uh, <clears throat> but it's practiced in wide, wide, widely. Recently, I've started to do men's um, prompts that are, have to do with men within a men's men only group so for example we say we say and this is a killer question tell me how you hide in relationship and we men work on men take turns working on that and uh, and it's profound and what <clears throat> an observation I just made the other day about that was that when we I'm just going to cheat here and just, I wrote it down the other day um, oh yeah when we're taking turns with that we're equal right so I go tell me your ex ex tell me how you hide in relationship and then the other person does that too so we're equal. There's nobody who's got, you know, big person and a little person. And if you can be equal with another man, you don't have to be afraid because you're the same. You don't have to be afraid. And if you don't have to be, if you're not afraid, you don't have to hide anything. And if you don't have to hide anything, then you're free from the whole bullshit world of trying to look good, trying to be safe, trying to belong, that whole thing. You don't have to do all of that. It's all, it's over. It's potentially over. If you really get it, you don't have to do any of that. So we're working on that. And I'm, I'm sure that, and I'm, I'm you know, in connection with some women that I hope are going to do something similar to this, <clears throat> to that. And then we can, you know, I'm, I'm ahead of myself. I'm just thrilled with what's happening with the men. So Maybe I should stop there. But we could have a conscious conversation between the women and the men. We could have an mm -hmm. arc, we could have an archetypal intimacy. Is that the phrase? We could have a, you know, a, a, you know, it's not a dating, a dating site or anything like that, a dating phenomenon, but it is a way to safely encounter each other with our truth in and if we don't have to be afraid and we don't have to hide. What shows up is that we respect and love each other. We do. That's our actual truth. Go ahead. This is a, a good idea. And I'm doing groups, no? uh, but it is more co-creative groups. We are six, seven people and talk together. Um, not in with a format like this. You know, normally, yes, with respect and with uh, leaving some silence in between and not jump over each other something like this and that that can go very deep also and yes. my what i notice is when we are only women it normally works perfectly as soon as there is a man no 
he 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 tries to impose his mode and his mode is talking about normally and not talking from within so that would be a good ex experiment to to create create yeah. this uh, with, i have a certain in my head you know? absolutely so, uh, because yeah. he, i know he is absolutely capable of this but yeah 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 we're, we're, we're caught in our social our social roles yeah i've I, i've done a lot of dyad meditation or a lot of group explorations i used to lead them and there were mostly women in them or mostly more women were attracted to it mm -hmm. and but and more recently i've been doing the dyad meditations very formally and there's surprisingly often equal numbers of men and sometimes more men are, are in it but doing that with enlightenment is the focus my sense is that the deeper sense of being a that, that there's a uh a basement that we won't go to there is a staying away from our experience as women or men it's like it's a we just agree we're about enlightenment and higher things we won't go to any of that any of that other stuff so mm -hmm. when it becomes invited in the sense of the men's group it brings out us an, another sort of safety and men can men can as i was mentioning see that they're equal and because the the back and forthness allows them not to have to be in a game about who is who doesn't who's want to lose perfect things. who's more perfect <laughs> who's more powerful who who belongs more is the way i I think of it, who belongs more and who belongs less, right? It's all of that is bullshit and and it disappears quickly. It it can disappear quickly if we're very clear about the way that we do it and allow each person to have their space without being improved or helped or guided or fixed in any way whatsoever, just to allow him to have his own space we come into us we just get past all of nonsense it, 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 we don't we don't do it it just happens because there's clarity in the space mm -hmm. women would have a different conversation a different you know they'd have, they'd have their own but i'm sure but their humanity will show beyond the social roles just as the men's do and then we can meet we can meet beyond the social roles as well and I'm super excited about that, that that could happen. Yeah, yeah that's good. Continue to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's work in progress. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I'll, what, uh, I'll, I'll, get, I'll give my contact details after. Yes, yes, course, too. Uh, we have about so people, also. Yeah. So, uh, so people, you also oh, so. named vSpace and uh, the mapping and so on. Maybe you talk a little bit about that, too. What do you understand under vSpace? What are, what are you doing there? Right. Well, th this is a, a refinement of the vSpace. It, it, what I'm talking about with the dyad stuff. Mm -hmm. When we do it, actually, in the Enlightenment context, they do the alternations. And for the most part, in the communities that I'm in, they don't do any reflection on that. So what we do... In the, in the men's thing is we take uh, a portion at the end in the dyad, in the dyad to ask what are you noticing about this mm -hmm. we space that we're in so each individual speaks for himself it goes back and forth but what are you noticing about that and then so that's that's the first parts are experience and the second part is reflection and like the we spaces are kind of what's happening here what's happening in this we space then we come out into the larger group with the different dyads and we say what are we noticing here in this experience what are we noticing it's like not giving an answer it's like what is happening here so that's it mm -hmm. 
So that's that's where I'm at with the we space these days. I mean, there's there's a whole theory in my book, Evolutionary You, is about the we space, but I'm not focused on that so much right at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you want to lead people where they find you on Substack, I I no. know. No, it, put it in the put it be, below if you can or send it out because it's I have to change the Substack name <clears throat> to waking up today, but it's under my name. It's Andrew Carter McDonald. So mm. that won't people won't that won't stick. So you put it you, you write it down if you will. Yeah. Somebody else had the Andrew McDonald name. Uh so okay. I my middle name in. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, I'd love to, I'd love for people to be in touch, uh, to subscribe there, and the whole pro project of man, man woman conversations will be going along there, as well as how how we can just just reflections on what waking up means in the context of this um, globalist weight that's on us from the all of those global powers. And I think that the antidote to globalist power is personal voice. It is our ability to appropriately use our personal voice to tell our truth. Because just as is true for men and women, we're we feel like, oh, I don't have a voice. I've got nothing to say. It's too big. It's too confusing for me. We feel that. And it's not true. Our voice is the missing part, our personal voice. And we can, we can do it. So it's really around raising personal voice, rise and shine. And um, and, and I use the man-woman part as one theater to work on that. Mm-hmm. We would be much more powerful, no? I want also say not only personal voice, but which is the expression can be the expression of your personal power. And you know, I'm a voice teacher, so I'm all up to to raise your your personal voice and come out uh, out and tell your truth with interview, the right voice. I should interview without, you over there, Heidi, about that. So yeah, do that. Uh, authentic voice. You know, if you are a deep person and really. And have a voice like this, nobody will believe you. You know, that's not, it's not a voice of a, a serious adult. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Things like that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's, I, I'm meaning not only our physical voice, but our. I know, I know. Yeah, our soul, our connection to our soul. Yeah. I know that. But <laughs> I want to say also the physical voice is important to get heard. Because if you speak in this way, in the no way, somebody is talking like this. Who, who is them? I mean, <laughs> you know, yeah. you need yeah. to have a certain power also in your physical voice to be heard. Otherwise, people talk over you. You know, so both together, it's all connected. You know, <laughs> it's all connected. Thanks, Heidi. Yeah. Great to see you again. Yeah, thank you. And then, if you want to interview me, welcome. <laughs> <laughs>